and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. Today I'm going to go over choosing an appendix carry holster and some things that you need to consider while picking one. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just browsing the internet and picking the first holster you see for any position, much less the appendix carry. There's a lot of holster makers out there and there's a lot of good holster makers out there, but there's a lot of things you need to consider while choosing the appendix carry. Most of you have asked your friends, asked your family what they have, what they like, and then you're going to try to choose off that to see which one you think will fit you best. It's just not that easy. So there's some things you need to consider while choosing an appendix carry holster and I'm going to go over them today. First and foremost, does it cover the trigger for safety? You definitely want to get one that covers the trigger and I suggest a hard cover not a cheap leather nor flimsy fabric one. These, along with a few others that don't cover the trigger, have ended up with accidental discharges. If you get one that covers the trigger and has that audible snap, you're not going to have an accidental discharge while holstered because it is secured and protected. That's one less thing you have to worry about. It really sucks if you've been over to pick something up, your gun goes off because of that cheap holster, hits your femoral artery, now you've got more blood gushing out than a samurai movie on a Sunday matinee. The second thing you're going to want to look for is the wedge on the back side that pushes the back or the top, however you want to look at it, of the gun back into your body. This adds for better concealment and less push out when bending over. Third, does it have a belt wing to push the grip, belt wing here, to push the grip into the body as well, just like that. This adds better concealment, really a better feel and effective carry all around. It won't feel sloppy while bending and moving during your daily routine. Now last, but one of the most important next to covering the trigger, does it have two belt clips? This is extremely important. Here's mine with only one belt clip attached and with this, even though I set it in the properly seated position with my daily moving, bending and just going about life, it will inevitably sink down either onto your belt or maybe even down into your pants behind your belt. This is going to cause a lot of problems during the day to where you're constantly having to adjust it. Or worst case scenario, Murphy's Law kicks in, would be that it has fell behind your belt, you're violently attacked and need it in less than three seconds and now this has put you behind the curve of life and we don't want that. Now here's mine mounted with two belt clips on my belt that are adjustable to a good ride height and grip angle so you can get your fingers under it, quickly grab it, and have a shot fired in less than three seconds, if you practice that is. It will sit in the same position all day and not move to a position that can be detrimental to your life. With the two clips, my gun stays where I put it and I can't push it down to my pants. Even when I'm pushing pretty hard to get it to move, it doesn't. This is one of the most important features of a good appendix carry holster. Now when you go shopping for one, you have some things that you can think about and you can consider while choosing your holster. These are some things I've noticed over the years as an instructor or even before I became an instructor that were important. One of the things you need to consider is comfort comes behind function. To be all honest, all holsters are going to be uncomfortable to begin with. Now, you wear that holster for a couple weeks and then you're not even going to be able to tell it. So you've got the functionality of the holster that's going to serve you well over that comfort, but it's become comfortable anyway because you've just gotten used to it. These are things that you need to keep in mind while choosing that holster. I suggest going to a holster company that offers the lifetime and manufacturer's warranty. Several reasons, if you buy this with that, you're not going to have to worry about that holster for the most part. These manufacturers with the lifetime warranties know that they have well-made holsters and they're going to last that lifetime, so they don't have to worry about the exchanges too much. Do things happen? Absolutely. You might get a bad material or the manufacturer might get bad material, make a holster and it ends up splitting and cracking. But most of those, they are going to give them a call or give them an email and they're going to replace your holster no questions asked. Here at Defense Training we make custom holsters so you can go check us out as well. DefenseTraining.org I'm Spencer, small arms instructor here at Defense Training. As always, prepare for the worst, pray for peace, stay safe, stay armed. Please like, subscribe, and comment on this video below. Thanks.